Thank you for joining us at the Roundtable. Brought to you by Community Education Arts, a nonprofit organization based in Noblesville, Indiana. I'm Alice Cavanis Gober, President of CE Arts. And I'm Sarah E. Morin, Secretary of CE Arts. Let's sit down at the Roundtable. All right, here we are again at the round table, slightly differently this time. Um, you know, we're doing this remotely, and this is our conversation, our discussion of our NICE project, the Noblesville Interdisciplinary Creativity Project. I should let everybody know that if I go like this or I go like this, it's because I have bifocals on and I have to be able to see to read something. And that's how I see it through the bottom of my glasses. So it looks funny on video. Um, anyway. Sarah E is joining me remotely. Hello, Sarah E. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you. This is Alice, and we are about to discuss our 2020 NICE project. Um, normally, we do this in private. We select our four books together um, in a private discussion, and then we select the passages out of those four books, and then we make a public announcement. This year, we're doing it a little bit differently. We're doing it all in front of you, at least remotely. So, Sarah E, why don't you tell the NICE folks out there a little bit about our NICE project. Yes, excellent. So NICE stands for Noblesville Interdisciplinary Creativity Expo, and this is our sixth year, yes, I believe. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Great. So the story of this is that Alice and I were sitting at a coffee shop. We had just done um, kind of an artistic exchange where um, we had a, a painting and poetry that went together and that just led into a creative discussion about how literature inspired us to create art and how we wanted everybody to have that feeling. So, you know, maybe someone who has read classics in the past and loved them, what could be a way that they could, you know, use their art to relate to that in a new way? Or if they read a classic in high school and it bored them to tears, how could we really spark that, that joy that we, well, I think I just uh, ripped off a line from uh, the lady who does cleaning. Yeah. How do we spark that joy, that joy. <laughs> um, for those who, who hadn't gotten that from reading in high school so that they could really connect to those beautiful classics that we loved. And so the idea then behind NICE is that we have four books each year. Mm -hmm. um, we also have four specific passages from each book. Mm -hmm. And then any artist of any experience level, you know, amateur to professional, um, and any type of art from painting to photography to music to acting to, I, I really want a cake baker. I know, I we want cake decorators <laughs> eventually. You know, we want <laughs> costumers, you know, we want clothes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But any artist of any type could then create art that is inspired by either the quote specifically or the book as a whole. And then yeah. along with this, we have usually workshops mm -hmm. that explore the themes, the background of each piece, maybe give us time to create yeah. um, and at least get the, the brainstorming started, and then also an exhibition. Now, this will look different this year. Yeah. We will be doing this online this year mm -hmm. but the advantage of that is that then we can reach a wider audience this is so true. we hope you'll be yeah. a part of that another thing that i think is important to you know when talking about workshops especially trying to do them online and everything uh one of the one of the things that has come out of our five years of doing workshops for our nice project is how therapeutic mm -hmm. this project is because every single year with every single book we've chosen every single passage we've chosen there have, there have been people, including ourselves, who have not only been re-inspired by that thing they haven't read since high school, or whatever, but they have found, you know, uh, how do I say it, like things they've gone through in their own lives or current events that are happening, mm -hmm. you know, that are difficult or challenging. And there's something in these passages, there's something in this classic literature that, that speaks to those modern situations. And it has in all of all of the workshops have been so therapeutic for working through that dialogue of of, you know, this is how this author back in, you know, 1815 wrote about something. But my gosh, it, that's how I feel today, you know. And so we've had a lot of um, wonderful therapeutic uh, elements come out of this project or come with this project, I should say. And I think 
you know, for both of us, I think we've always, you know, supported and believed that art is a very th therapeutic uh, medium, no matter what type of art you do, artwork, creativ creativity. Um, so that's something that I think, especially in this situation we have with the COVID-19 pandemic and everything, we, you know, it's hard not to think of that. It's hard not to realize that what we're doing in our own small way with this project can possibly reach potentially, you know, in a therapeutic way, so many people and especially artists and creatives right now. So that that's really important to me. And, and I will give a little preview that some of the uh, books and passages that we're we're looking at this year, I went back and looked at them again with that lens of mm. what we're all going through right now. And, and, you know, it, it, it really kind of turned my favorites differently than I thought. You know, I, mm. we got lots to talk about. I'm so excited. <laughs> going to say, you just saying that makes me like hear in my head a different spin on one of the passages that I picked. So, I yeah. Know. So, okay. So I'm going to just quickly read off our short list. We've got eight books. We've narrowed it down to eight books right now. We're not even talking about passages yet. Those are just the books that we're looking at. Um, we're looking at Jane Eyre, which was published in 1847, written by Charlotte Bronte, Emma by Jane Austen, 1815, Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell, 1936, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, 1890, Dracula by Bram Stoker, 1897, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which was originally published in two volumes in 1868 and 1869, Portrait of Jenny by Robert Nathan, published in 1940, and The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, published in 1898. So those are our short list eight top picks. So out of that eight, we're going to get down to four. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think it's, it's important for our audience to kind of tell what our thought process is going to be for selecting. Yeah. First off, we need a selection which is going to appeal to multiple types of art. Yes. And sometimes that is a specific quote where we really right. dive the into passage, that. Yeah, I would say that, I would say when we think about the book, the whole book, mm -hmm. we're really kind of like trying to think of things that are either timely in some way or mm -hmm. bring something you know, to the table that is important now or something that either one or the other of us just flat out loves and wants to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more personal. But when we get to the selection of passages, we definitely look for passages from each of our four choices that stand alone. You don't have to read the whole book. You can take that passage and it's got enough meat on the bone. It's got enough visuals. It's got enough evocative language or something that that any creative person can find something to work with so mm -hmm. yes yeah, so that prefaces part of what goes into our uh, right. first choice of the books and then choice of the passages out of the books so right yeah. and I'd say also one of the other things that we look for is what's going to have a meaty discussion yes you know and, and, and something controversy yes yes absolutely right and and that's why one of your picks I would go with because it is controversial. So let's discuss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you do. You, okay. You want to go for, should we discuss the eight books one at a time? Sure. You go first, then I'll go. Um, oh, okay. That's fine. Um, so for example, uh, like start with Jane Eyre and tell me why you think, tell us why you think that would be a good one. And we'll just go down the list. Okay, gotcha. Well, Jane Eyre, A, selfishly, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> uh, B, we had loosely discussed maybe having a theme of romance. Yes. And so if we decide to carry through with that, I think Jane Eyre has um, really needy fodder yeah. for discussing romance. For example, the relationship that Rochester has with his, can I give spoilers? <laughs> yeah, I think so at this point. <laughs> that okay. book's been around since 1847, <laughs> and there's been several movies and TV things. I think we can do spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, spoiler on a 150-plus-year-old book. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rochester's um, uh, relationship with the wife in the attic. Yeah. Very unhealthy relationship. So, talking about the unhealthy romance. Right. Analyzing, you know, is the, the really intense relationship between Rochester and Jane healthy? Yeah. Does it become healthy later? 
yeah. um, is this idea of a man who just loves us intensely and turns over everything for us. I mean, that's a romantic ideal that we women are kind of, you know, trained to uh, is good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we see that in, in Twilight well, it's even. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. I mean, it's that right. You know. Is it, is it healthy? Famous, you know, kind of thing. So. Right. Um, but also, I think when we get into the romance that is proposed by Sinjin, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's an undertold part of the story in almost yeah. every adaptation I've seen yeah. um, about he's also proposing a romance. It's just kind of free of emotion. It's all practicality. Yeah. And I think those three relationships there and analyzing, are these healthy? do they at some point become healthier? Mm -hmm. um, wh how do we relate to them as even modern women? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a lot of really strong discussion fodder. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think that's true. And I think Jane Eyre would have to be at the top of, of any list that we put together where we're looking at, um, you know, I would say ideas of romance or maybe um, cultural norms of romance and the good, the bad, and the ugly of said you know, norms and things. And I think every, I, I can't really add to what you've said. I think what you've said hits all the spots and the, the reasons that would make that a good choice. That said, one more, um, one more. I'm not sure Jane Eyre is, is, is super high up on my list this mm -hmm. year, but um, you know, we've got eight books. So, you know, we, that's what we're discussing. That's how, how we're going to, you know, figure that out. So. I have another, I have another. Oh yeah, okay. So another reason why I think Jane Eyre should be strongly in the consideration is we always try each year to have some sort of underrepresented voices. Um, we have a lot of white people on this list. Yeah, we do. But we, <laughs> we can bring in other discussions of racism mm -hmm. and ableism yeah. with this relationship with this first wife. Yeah, that's true. That's and so I, I think that could provide some interesting discussion too. It could. I mean, that, that's a good point. Um, I think, I think that's a very, very valid point. Yeah. Okay. So we'll spin in our wheels. See what, see what, see what, <laughs> I mean, our wheels in our head, not like, not like we're not moving. We are moving. <laughs> mm -hmm. So next up, tell us what you think about Emma by Jane Austen. I mean, it's Jane Austen. What more is there to <laughs> it's say? your favorite, I know. <laughs> so I, I, I love so much Jane Austen. Um, first, it's very timely since there's the new film out and yep. it has been very well received. Yep. Um, it is I one that... Seen it. Have you seen it? I have not yet. Yeah. I have not yet. It is one that I do intend to see, but oh, I have yeah, not seen too. it yet. So um, I particularly like the, the twist in there that um, Emma is a stranger to her own feelings for a long part of the book. And I think that that twist is really interesting. And I do think, again, this is one where the nature of, of love and can you plan love um, would be an interesting discussion. It's just fun. It would have strong familiarity for a lot of our participants. Yeah, and we I do try to always have something obscure and more popular. Yeah. I think I think um, this one is is fairly high up in my list because, uh, well, this is kind of an awkward way to phrase this, but in relation to some of the other books in our short list that are pretty high up on my list, this has some either very complementary um, uh, passages in it that I think would would you know give us some theme some themes. Um, and or gives us some opposites, you know, some, some things to compare and contrast with mm -hmm. some of the other options that we have on our list. Um, I, when I revisited um, these, these, our short list in terms of, you know, the pandemic and everything, I actually found at least uh, one of the quotes that we'll be talking about if this is our, one of our chosen four, that I think would really work for the this the feelings and the situation we're in right now um and then another thing that i noticed were there were at least two or three passages that i so, that i kind of zeroed in on that that were very similar in terms of um ideas of love and and feminism and stuff as as a couple of our other books so there was mm -hmm. a lot of meat on that bone if you will and um again feminism you know the, the underrepresented voice of women in, in general always kind of 
strikes the chord with me. And I, I think um, it certainly in today's world is still as relevant as as any time. So um, so this is a this is a very, very uh, I think there's a lot of meat on this bone to mm -hmm. say. So and, and um, something else, uh, we, we, we sometimes have the tendency to delve into books which are downers, yeah. and Emma is very uplifting. Yeah. So oh, when I say downers, they're still, they're wonderful drama, but sure, they, sure. they could be viewed as such. Yeah, this one has a happy ending kind of thing, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it has fun, it's, you know, it's quippy, it's, it's you know, witty, it's, you know, it's got some, some of that in it. I, I, I understand that, I know, I know that that's something that, um, I guess I must tend to go towards the darker literature. I don't know, but you know. Well, we, we both choose them, Alice, so we yeah, both like them. I know. <laughs> yeah, so I just find so much to work with in the in the some of the darker ones. But yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I know in in Emma, there's one passage in particular that really gets my goat. You know, in terms of that male female, uh, and 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 I think speaks to um, abusive relationships. Mm. It's not. I don't think most people would read it that way, but to me, it's it's just like oh god, you know. And so there, for me, there is there are, there are some some passages in this book that I think um, would work for for nice this year, no matter whether or not we have a one overarching theme or several that we're working with. So okay, okay, man, now I can't wait to hear which one's so controversial. I, know, I can't can't wait to get to the passages. This has been At the Roundtable with Alice and Sarah E. of Community Education Arts. Our nonprofit organization is based in Noblesville, Indiana. You can find us online at cearts.org. This activity made possible in part with support from the Indiana Arts Commission and the National Endowment for the Arts, a federal agency. We'd like to thank James Weston for writing our intro music and for his technical savvy. Join us next time at, at the, the Roundtable. Table.